I could have been somebody. For our first episode, we'll be talking about Enter the Dragon, which defined the future of cinema and was way ahead of the curve in many aspects. A lot of the incredible impact of this film was thanks to the persistence of the film's star, Bruce Lee. Prior to leaving Hollywood for Hong Kong, Bruce Lee was a world-renowned martial artist who is well-respected internationally. Bruce Lee often did private lessons with the likes of karate champions such as Chuck Norris and Joe Lewis. And Bruce was also doing one-on-one -on -one lessons with celebrities like Steve McQueen, James Coburn, and Sharon Tate. Despite this credibility, Bruce found himself denying roles more often than accepting them due to the racist depiction of Asians. Bruce, now tired of this, left for Hong Kong to pursue the stardom he deserved. Fast forward to 1972 and Bruce found that the studios Bruce pitched Kung Fu to went behind his back and produced the show without any of his involvement. And worse yet, casted David Carradine, a white man, as the lead. This segues us into our next level of impact, Enter the Dragon had, its cultural impact. Bruce Lee being a cultural icon is not just because of what he represented, it is due to the countless trials he endured. And Bruce Lee has many arcs, but the one that specifically lands in Enter the Dragon is Hollywood's acceptance of him. Bruce entered Hollywood in the 1960s, a time when Mickey Rooney played an Asian landlord in Breakfast at Tiffany's, Henry Silva played Sunjin in The Manchurian Candidate, and Omar Sharif played Genghis Khan. It was a time when Asians weren't even given supporting roles on the silver screen. Even on the small screen, it wasn't until 1966 when there would be a reoccurring role played by an Asian on a TV show. And that happened to be Bruce Lee on The Green Hornet. And of course, we know what it took for Bruce to arrive on the silver screen in Hollywood, but it is poetic justice that Enter the Dragon was the first one. It was hugely impactful that Bruce Lee was able to lead in a film because, for one, Bruce was able to express Asian culture without stereotyping it, at least not to the extent that was seen in Hollywood at that point. Also, Bruce shattered the long-held stereotype that Asians were weak by being able to showcase his techniques and strength. Additionally, the weak Asians were often presented as dumb. These characters were presented as not only being physically strong, but also cunning and intelligent. We can take this ball. Okay. Another character who became a vehicle for the education of cultural struggles was Williams, played by Jim Kelly. Williams at one point in the film was harassed by police and was nearly assaulted by them how he dealt with that in the film helped inform an entirely different genre. But additionally, William's cool character was a big part in inspiring a lot of African American characters seen throughout the 1970s. All of Rudy Ray Moore's movies took inspiration from Jim Kelly's portrayal of Williams in Enter the Dragon. But beyond his cool facade, Williams took time to comment on the world around him. They don't live so big over there. Ghettos are the same all over the world. They stink. There could be an argument made for Enter the Dragon also being a vehicle for commentary on the dangers of corruption, drugs, and prostitution. Please understand, if I missed anyone, it's been a big day. I'm a little tired. Oh, of course, Mr. Williams. But what is most evident is how important it was for Lee to be seen as capable protagonist in the movie. Bruce Lee poured his heart and soul into this role as if he is intensely staring at Hollywood into the producers faces telling them not only to accept me Bruce Lee as the lead but also accept all races as leads in their films. It's important to note that the civil rights movement in the United States wasn't even a decade prior to the release of Enter the Dragon and the battles that were fought were still fresh in the memories of many Americans. They were battles Bruce Lee was well aware of since him and his wife Linda had to wait until 1968 to be legally married because interracial marriage was legal until that point. Additional to having to wait for a legally 
accepted form of interracial marriage, Bruce still had to deal with Hollywood and took him traveling across the world for years and becoming one of the most recognized people on the planet in order for studios to finally accept him as a viable risk. Enter the Dragon's success was a huge victory for all races around the world, where people did not only be exposed to Asian culture, they were also shown for the first time in a mainstream Hollywood movie there's a protagonist in a leading role in a box office smash that was a color other than white. Sadly, Bruce Lee would never be able to taste the superstardom he reached at the release of Enter the Dragon because he passed away only weeks before it was released. Thankfully, Bruce Lee left this world with a lot of seeds to water that have led to a harvested change. Bruce Lee's philosophical ideas are often overshadowed by his martial arts, and that's understandable given his incredible influence on martial arts should always be recognized. But when looking back at who he was as a human being, one must ask, what was he trying to communicate to this world? Take a quick listen to this quote from an appearance Bruce Lee had on the Pierre Burton show. You still think of yourself Chinese or do you ever think of yourself as North American? You, you, you know what I want to think of myself? As a human being, because I mean, I don't want to sound like, you know, as Confucius say, but under the sky, under the heaven, man, there is but one family. It just so happened, man, that people are different. Okay, we got to go. Thank you, Bruce Lee, for coming hey, here. Thank, thank you, you for watching. Bruce Lee strongly believed that there was a huge philosophical gap between the West and the East and spent almost as much time writing philosophy as he did practicing martial arts. In fact, Bruce Lee is often regarded as one of the most influential cultural philosophers of the 1970s. So understanding that, it makes it very clear why Bruce Lee fought to include these philosophical elements in Enter the Dragon. As an audience member, one must ask, what is Bruce, the writer of Enter the Dragon, telling his audience? In this same interview where Bruce Lee shared his philosophical stance on humanity, Bruce Lee shared another famous quote of his. He said, empty your mind, be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. Many interpret this quote as communicating the importance of versatility and adaptability in martial arts. But remember, Bruce Lee parallels martial arts in life. These characters in Enter the Dragon rejecting the uniform may not just be rejecting the limitation of martial arts system and styles. It is Bruce Lee in writing showing that he rejected the uniform offered to him by Hollywood only a few years prior. Outside. That uniform represented roles offered to Bruce like the one Mickey Rooney played in Breakfast at Tiffany. Bruce Lee's Be Like Water quote is Bruce Lee telling Hollywood in the world that he will adapt and overcome its oppressive systems. And that he did, and he told us that he would, in Enter the Dragon, given Lee's anti-authoritarian stance on the corrupt system laid out by Han. Han's system represents the Hollywood system. By Lee breaking Han's mirrors, he is breaking the illusions laid out by the oppressive Hollywood system. Images like only white leads are profitable in Hollywood. Illusions like there can never be an agent accurately portrayed on the big screen. And ideas like Bruce Lee isn't a profitable actor even if he is a nationally recognized athlete. In conclusion, the seeds planted by Bruce almost 50 years ago still need watering. And when I said I would come back to the it is like a finger pointed away to the moon quote, here it is. Lee's character was telling his student that as a teacher, Lee can only do so much. He is only the finger. Even if Lee hadn't died, the world would still have a lot of progress to go. Bruce Lee understood the power of individuals and their will to transcend systems, even corrupt ones. And Bruce understood that people would always need to water the seeds of change whether or not they had a leader there to point them in the right direction. Hollywood still has some growing pains to get through, but a lot of its growth is thanks to icons like Bruce Lee. Like Jackie Robinson in baseball, Bruce isn't seen as the only one to do it, but he 
was definitely the first. One day, we will all see ourselves as one family, and hopefully we will all remember the struggles those like Bruce Lee had to go through. That's it for this episode of Defining Cinema. That was Enter the Dragon and its impact on the 1970s. You're gonna give me the truth. I am now, I'm honestly saying this, okay? Yes, I have been very successful, Yeah. okay? But I, I mean, I think the word star is, is I mean, I, I do not look upon myself as a star. I, I really don't. I mean, believe me, man, yeah. when I say it. I mean, I'm not saying it because well, I... What are you going to do? Let's get back to the question. Okay. <laughs> are you going to st stay in Hong Kong and be famous? Are you going to go to the United States and be famous? Or are you going to try and eat I'm, your cake and have it too? I am going to do both because, yeah. you see, I have already made up my mind that in the United States, I think something about the Oriental, the, I mean, the true Oriental should be shown. Hollywood sure as heck hasn't. You better believe it, man. I mean, it's always that pigtail and bouncing around, chop-chop, you know, with the 